is Jenna Boseger, and thank you for watching my Cryptic Cryptids YouTube channel. On this episode, I want to show you a picture that I took when I was doing my Bigfoot research of what looks to be a cryptid in a nest. And I also want to tell you about the situation behind the photo. I took this photo back when I was doing my Bigfoot research back in 2013 through 2015. And if you're like me and you're interested in all things cryptids, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really do appreciate it. Okay, so I took this picture back in 2013, back in the early days when I was just starting doing my research, and I took it in one of the Bigfoot hotspots I was in, and it was actually the same place where there I found tons of nests and actually the same place that I did the night investigation at. So there definitely were creep cryptids and other wildlife using this area as a trackway to access the lakes is what I had determined. Now in this video I also want to address the fact that I made a mistake and I want to admit to my mistake and I also want to evaluate this picture and see if I can find what kind of a creature this is and look at some of the possible local wildlife in the area. So there definitely is a creature here, at least one, maybe two. As I was doing my Bigfoot research and I was learning, you know, completely self-taught and learning as I went along, I learned about the technique called habituation that was used successfully by both Jane Goodall and Diane Fossey in their research studies. And so once you realize that you're in a hotspot where these creatures are moving in and out of and using and, you know, coming back to again and again, then I started doing the same thing and coming back to this area again and again, frequently, like several times a week. The idea behind it is to just be an innocent observer and to not interfere with their activities and just to try to watch them in their natural environment and to see and the main idea behind it is to desensitize them to your presence by being non-threatening that is the core behind it is to just be non-threatening and i broke all of those rules in getting this photo and I'm admitting this because I don't recommend doing this. And also, if I was in this situation again, I would have handled it much differently. I would have like just kind of tried to sit around in that area and just look for movement and desensitize them to my presence. But I didn't do that. So when I thought that there was um, a nest in this area, I tried to maybe kind of get too close to take a picture. And in doing so, it bothers me when I look at this picture because I can see the fear in this baby's eyes. And not only that, but when it happened, all these things happened at the same time. When I got the picture, and then I realized I was kind of stuck in the dead branches and I could see the light, you know, from the open area. And I just knew that I just had to take like two or three more steps in these broken branches to get out of the area. And I shouldn't have been in that area is my point. That's the mistake I made. When I realized I was stuck at that same moment, I heard like seven really fast, like boom, 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 boom. It did feel like it was at me, but it didn't make sense to me because I still wasn't aware. I didn't know that Bigfoot would make knocks like that. I only heard about the knocks like one out in the forest at night and then you just wait and wait and wait and maybe there'll be one back in the distance, you know. But never had I ever heard of them going really fast like that in a row. And it sounded like a shotgun. But I didn't really think it was a gun because it crossed my mind at the moment. But then I was like, it doesn't really make any sense. But looking back, I think it was 
oh, you know, warning either to me or to local, to the other cryptid Bigfoots in the area that I was getting way too close to a nest. And I compare it to some local creatures in the area, like the most likely would have been a burrowing owl. But looking at the burrowing owl, you can see that its beak starts almost right in between its eyes. And this one starts down much lower. So then I thought, okay, well, a cougar, maybe a baby cougar cub. Like it could be a cougar cub, more likely than the owl. But like, do cougars really have their baby kittens in such a... This isn't out in the middle of nowhere. There's like, you know, there are people like me that walk around here. So I just didn't know that they would have their cubs so close to civilization. And the other thing is... I don't know, is this the type of nest that cougars make? So there's one more comparison that I want to make, and it's to a very specific type of monkey. And the reason being because way back in the day, this was like probably in 2013, when Todd Standing very first came out with these pictures of what he claimed to be a Bigfoot cryptid and the experiences that he had around him. When those pictures first came out, I was in the middle of my Bigfoot research and I was studying monkeys. I was obsessed with monkeys for a time and it was all because of my Bigfoot research that I was trying to research monkeys and gorillas and chimpanzees and I was obsessed with monkeys. I am not using the word lightly. At that time, I knew all about all kinds of monkeys from where they were. When I first saw Todd Standing's the orange cryptid that he took, it immediately reminded me of a specific monkey that I was aware of at the time because I was studying them. It wasn't just a langur, it was a Javan langur. So the Javan langur monkey, obviously is from Java, orange hair and white face, and the babies, you know, they just reminded me of Todd Standing's cryptid. And although they don't have the same noses, I just decided to compare that to mine because I had that memory. This one has more similar nose than the Todd Standing cryptid. But anyways, I thought that was interesting. Another thing I want to talk about real quick is that when I was studying monkeys, I learned all kinds of things about wildlife because of my Bigfoot research. I started learning all about monkeys. And I learned about zoos. And I didn't know this before, and I know this now. And so I understand there's going to be people out there that don't know this either, but I'm, I learned this and it's not my opinion. Zoos are bad and you should not go to the zoo. And if you were to tell your children the truth about the zoos, they would leave there crying and in tears and traumatized. And that would be giving them an education at the zoo. You teach them complete ignorance. I am a victim of that. I lived, I was born in San Diego. I went to the zoo and you know what? Never again. I went to SeaWorld, never again. And please don't take your kids to the zoo. It's really bad for all of society, for them, for everybody, for the animals. Zoos, you can have a million babies born in zoos, in captivity, but that does nothing to save the population from extinction. Zoos are bad that I had to say something about that because it is related. So thank you so much for listening and so much for watching. I really do appreciate your support and don't forget to like and subscribe if you're into cryptids. And until next time, bye!